Now we have 318 Damn. subscribers, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you are following a company of nine, right. now we have 327 people trekking can across I, Middle Earth. Can I interject something real quick? Of course. When we did, when we did our calculations on last episode about how many people would be trekking across Middle Earth, oh, forgot us. We, left, we left ourselves out. <laughs> like, oh, I think I just did that. So yeah. it's it's 318 subscribers plus a company of nine and plus two of us, us well, your guides on speculative the, Tolkienism. So that's 329 people that we have to be fed, housed, sheltered, and uh, entertained. Well, you know, I think uh, Genghis Khan said that uh, 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 an army marches on their stomach, so um, we'll have good food. No, I don't know if Genghis Khan said We are that, marching but, uh, on our wits. All right. Okay. We've got so, we've got delicious lembas bread <laughs> for everybody. We got digital lembas. This is what this is. So th they get trapped in Moria, and the watcher in the water slams the doors here. But no, he not just he not just slams the doors. He shuts them the hell in. And, yeah, and he piles up rocks and stuff, and pulls up the holly trees. Right. Uh, and actually, speaking of the trees that get pulled up, I actually noticed. So here we have Sam at the very bottom, clinging to Frodo's arm, collapsed on a step in the back in the black darkness. Poor old Bill. So he's like really choked up about the loss of Bill, right? Yeah. And um, Gandalf does not seem at all phased about Bill, like he could care less about Bill. Yeah, yeah. Because he says, "Well, well, the passage is blocked behind us now." And there's only one way out, the other side of the mountain. <laughs> I fear the sound that boulders have been piled up and the trees uprooted and thrown across the grate. I am sorry for the trees were beautiful and had stood so long. Right. You know what would have been funny, though? It's like, oh, wait. It looks like he threw Bill against the rocks as well. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I heard, I heard a nay. Nay. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. It looks I'm like sorry, Sam. <laughs> It looks like your pony is a... toast. His bones are going to be blocking our passageway back. Bill is a mule, a pony, right? A pony, yeah. Right. What's the difference between a mule and a pony? And a, uh, and a burrow? Uh, I think it, I, there is a difference. Like, I think a pony well, is a good one. One is bit. sterile, I think, right? Anyway, uh, so the wizard's like, uh, hey, there's these trees I'm more concerned about than, I know. than Bill. And then... Uh, Real quick, I also noticed yes. <laughs> right here on 403. So Boromir muttered under his breath. He muttered under his breath, but the echoing stone magnified the sound to a hoarse whisper that all could hear. So after they were trapped in Moria, Boromir's muttering under his breath, in the deep places of the world, and thither we are going against my wish. Who will lead us now in this deadly dark? So he's pissed, and he's, like, right, muttering right. to himself. But it's, like, a hot mic. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like, it's like, literally echoing throughout all the yeah, and, uh, caverns. Yeah, Everyone's, like, like kind of like, I bro. Bro, bro, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, chill bro. Gandalf's got it. Bro. Got this. I've got this. I don't know if I mentioned this, but 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 reading this chapter, it's like I I, I felt – extremely claustrophobic because can you imagine what it would be like you're underground you know um in real life and then all of a sudden it's like i've got to walk 40 miles this way right to get out of the like i i don't i don't know how i'm gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. navigate this you know the one exit you know about is sealed and not just sealed right. but like under rubble and yeah and it's like You'll probably be here for like four weeks trying to dig your way out of this, and you, even then, you might not even make it. You yeah. know. And have you ever been stuck in a tight place or underground? Oh, dude, I'm claustrophobic at AF. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to to a, a a cave, like a little cave tour. Like I can't. What, like was it the cave of we... Kyle Banner? Yeah. To the north, there lies a cave. The cave of Kyle Banner. Yes. No. Um. I, it was just like a. Uh, just it was like a between here and idaho i it was in it was somewhere in mid nevada you know okay um 
And I just remember like, oh, we're going to walk in a cave. And then like the door shut behind you. And all of a sudden it's like an airlock. Like, you know, like when you're in an airplane and they shut oh, wait, the door. Was it, in, uh, was it in uh, Virginia City, Nevada? No, no, okay. no, no. I don't think so. Maybe. They have you know, a cave. I was like I was 16. It was, it's yeah, a mine, but, actually. No, it was. This is actually a cave. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know? So, so like we're like, okay. So, you know, like, like when you're on an airplane and the door shuts and all of a sudden you hear. Whoop, and it sounds like the whole like like it, it's just it's like the, cabin that cabin pressure yeah that cabin pressure like that's what that door felt like behind me that shut and all of a sudden i just got completely claustrophobic because oh, there's a door behind you and then there's a door leading down to the mine right mm -hmm. and you're in this ton like a, this 30 foot tunnel you know and i'm like we got to start moving forward this is just like this is crazy and like the poor lady like she's like, oh, did you hear that? It's so quiet. I'm like, can we go now? <laughs> <laughs> did she ever do the thing where she turned out all the lights? Uh, I maybe. I I don't know. I was like, I was panicking by that time. My dad oh, was like, usually when you get a mine tour or a cave tour, like your guide will be like, okay, I want you to turn off your flashlights, yeah. and then you turn off flashlights, and it's like pitch black, and there's like, this is what real darkness looks like. You don't know what real darkness is. No, anyway. Yeah, I know what you mean. I actually never really realized I was claustrophobic. And I have been in a few, like, um, you know, trapped in an elevator once or twice. Never really bothered me too much. Right, right. Except the first time I ever realized I was super claustrophobic is I was in a, um, it was a cave. It was a, like a man-made cave. It was yeah. in a place called Cappadocia in uh, eastern Turkey. Right, right. And these are like caves and caverns that might have existed naturally, but they've certainly been like kind of like Moria, like right, right. built upon and, and just levels and tunnels built over hundreds and hundreds of years, basically like Moria. Um, do, they have, do they have mithril there? They might have had even mithril. I never looked. But but Excellent. it's like the the walls of this hillside that these caves are carved into seem like very soft like they're not like limestone or anything they're kind of more like sandstone or or even softer like mud yeah 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 <laughs> so, oh. so i'm down in this rat run 10 stories down by this point we've been walking for a while and i'm like and he's like oh now we're 700 meters under the earth and and it's getting tight tighter and tighter yeah. and you're just surrounded by these mud walls and I'm like, I just started panicking. I'm like, I need to Dude. get to the surface right now. Yeah. Which way to the surface? Yeah, dude, that would, that would be a speed. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. So that would. And then suck. oh, one one other thing, I was in um, uh, the one of the pyramids of Giza, and mm. uh, you need to walk through a tiny little narrow hallway up, uh -huh. like kind of in a diagonal, kind of going up this way and it's this tight squeeze and you got all these like japanese tourists coming down the other direction you're basically oh. like laying against your head faces against the wall and it's 130 degrees and and i'm like i'm going to die here well, that is horrific stuck. so the point being is that they're stuck in moria and they can't get out no yes. they have to go this so tolkien established this very good reason for why they actually have no other option now they have to go through you know it's funny though like if you look at it it's like oh like like they, they they went through this big ordeal right and they're like well let us sit and rest and have something to eat <laughs> like, oh. uh, get this green slime off your arm I from know. here have you, a spot of tea it literally is like like something that was probably older than gladriel like try to pull you down into the uh, uh, pits of the water and it's like, Oh, I just need a little bit of crunchy munchie, you know? <laughs> when you say older than Gladriel, you're, you make it sound like Gladriel is like this old crone. Yeah. I, but she, she's, well, I know probably, she's super old. Yeah. But she's still beautiful. Right? I am the tempest. There's a tempest in me. There's a tempest in me. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, the the one interesting thing that happens, like, before they have these big encounters with the Balrog and the orcs and stuff, is um, Gollum makes his reappearance. 
Right, but but only Gollum's, very subtly. Yeah, very subtly. Because that's what I was going to bring up is the fact yeah, that yeah. Frodo with the ring, and and maybe to a lesser degree because he he was kind of on the precipice of of entering into the shadow realm or whatever, can see way better in the dark. But he can right. also sense things. He senses danger ahead and danger following him, and that's like like I think that's the first indication that 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 Gollum is. In the mines, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you you do see kind of through Frodo's perspective that he's the first kind of person who, well, I mean, Gandalf is probably aware of what's going on as well, maybe Aragorn even too. But uh, since most of this is through Frodo's point of view, um, definitely Frodo, it says, it says here at the bottom of the page, Frodo began to hear or imagine that he heard something else, like the faint fall. Well, I mean, first of all, real quick, this paragraph yeah. that's kind of highlighted here mm -hmm. um, is all about the sounds of things. Yeah, yeah. And I think actually this whole chapter, I've no I noticed it has tons of like references to sounds. And yeah, yeah. it's kind of like Tolkien knew that, okay, so we're in a dark place. So not a lot of things to look at. So I'm really going to describe a lot of sounds. Um, yeah, and a yeah. few like, you know, oh, they, they feel the wind in certain areas, but mostly it's about sounds. And so each person has their different stride, um, the, the patter of hobbit feet and the long stride of Aragorn. Um, anyway, so Frodo began to hear or imagine that he heard something else like the faint fall of soft bare feet, never loud enough or near enough for him to feel certain that he heard it. But once... It had started, but once it had started, it never stopped while the company was moving, but it was not an echo, for when they halted, it pattered on for a little all by itself, and then grew yeah. still. But does, isn't, isn't that what echoes do? Like, after you stop talking, it kind of goes on by itself for a little, a little bit. But, but, yeah. it, but I, know there's what, like, I know what he means. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. More, and, than and, an, more than an echo would. Right, right. It's convenient that that Gollum's actually here. Like, 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 I, I guess I like, was it ever explained what he was doing? in like, I, I think it was like, like alluded to that. He was just, he got trapped in Moria. Right. Like Is trying to find us. Gollum, Gollum, like he, cause he didn't follow them into, into Moria, into Moria. Right. You know, he, he he's have been there. Right. Maybe he's looking for fishes. So remember how he escaped from Legolas? Yeah. He found his way into Moria from the east. Yeah, yeah, but I knew by that. By the time he and got then... to Holland's Gate, he was too weak to push the doors open. So he was lurking in Moria until the Fellowship arrived and then began to follow them. So he's been in Moria ever since he escaped from the elves in Mirkwood. Yeah, I knew that, but again, convenient, you know, for the, uh, for the, for the, um, right. Cause he would have, he obviously Gollum would not have known that the company of the nine was going to go that way. Yeah. And, and I mean, if they, if they would have like, uh, went to the gap of Rohan, uh, got over the Cataras pass, they Gollum still would be in Moria until, you know, to, to this then, day. Yeah, it'd be like. I mean, he spent I that, probably. Have no problem. He probably spent hundreds of years under Goblin Town in the Misty Mountains, where Bilbo met him in that yeah. cave. Right. He spent yeah, yeah. way too much time in there, just getting famished. Um, he probably would have spent a few hundred more years in Moria. Yeah, yeah. Living the similar life, maybe he liked that. Maybe he likes that life. Maybe he's well, like, I think it was like yeah, actually. Oh, I from. remember this. This reminds me of my old home. And, and honestly, man, like they, they honestly, they, the orcs that that rescued uh, Gollum probably came from uh, Moria, you know, and and you know, that's right. Took him in, and then that's you know how he he ended up there. Now, you know, it's an interesting, uh, interesting kind of question too. Is that? Gollum tied up with the ring and his his life expectancy like stretched way far beyond you know yes. what what you know, um, 
he couldn't die, could he? Unless he, I mean, like as far as like from old age, right? He like, was so he, stretched. He was stretched, but I mean, I'm wondering if, if it, even with um, the lack with lack of food or very little food, mm. you know, does he c- could he starve to death? You know, or is it you know because like w- w- what do you eat? Right in Moria, you yeah. know, I mean, maybe he's adept at finding food in the the yeah. you know the weirdest places, but uh, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of one of those like swamis you hear about, uh, who like those yogis who yeah yeah yeah, yeah. who can stop their heart and uh, live for ten years without any ten, food or whatever. Yeah, which is no, probably but, just hogwash, but still. Yeah, no, like self denial. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he wants to deny, you know, but what is kind of again it's it's fortuitous that 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 he found them you know it's lucky for Gollum um, because like I, I mean think about it you're Gollum and you're you're desperate for the ring and you're in this random ass mine in the middle of yeah. really nowhere and who should just walk by but the <laughs> one thing you're looking for <laughs> the one person in all of middle earth who uh, happens to have yeah. what you're looking for? It's crazy. Yeah, but again, unlike again. unlike the stupid happy accidents that you get in Rings of Power, this one has so many levels of justification for how we got. Yeah, there. you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're asking. It's like a, a, a feasible excuse for why for why people are know. where they are and where they're yeah. going and how they got there and what they want by getting to where they are you know not just like oh i just happen to be in the middle of the ocean doing yeah. nothing oh, hey, look the one guy in the world that i'm i here you are <laughs> and here you are no but but but, but again i i do think and, and and also the fact that that you know like the the ring has a pull and 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 i mean i think if if Gollum's like in the vicinity of the ring it's kind of like oh i'm gonna go this way yeah. you know um and he obviously knew who gandalf was he obviously knew who aragorn was because they right. captured him yep. and they questioned him you know right. so he knows is, all these well and he probably even recognizes uh a baggins when he smells one yeah yeah good you know he could be confused by like the the four hobbits because where it's like oh these two kind of smell like Bilbo, but this one really smells like Bilbo. <laughs> As we mentioned how there's so many, uh, like, sounds. Like, it's very sound heavy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the darkness kind of requires us to just pay attention to what we hear more. So Tolkien's using a lot of sound imagery. You hear the plunk yeah. uh, when when uh, Pippin throws the rock in the uh the <laughs> dumbass pippin <laughs> dumbass pippin throws the rock in the well he's like what's that cried gandalf so obviously like they're 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 kind of i mean first of all they're they're trying to keep a low profile right 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 so we joked earlier that we didn't want boromir to like use his, uh, <laughs> boromir like at this very moment, can you imagine if Boromir's like, "I'm going forth"? Yes, that'd be so, uh, right. I, I would look, man. If I were going to write fan fiction, <laughs> Boromir would start every morning. Blowing to be honest, home. our whole channel is nothing but uh, J.R.R. Tolkien <laughs> fan fiction. <laughs> it's like we're just <laughs> we're just making shit up. But I wonder how much of 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 Pippin dropping the rocks alerted them. Any more than like them just you know traipsing through, like like the normal right. noise of moving has alerted them, you know. Right. I mean, I always thought that 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 plunk was like the 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 snowball that just yeah yeah grew and grew as it fell down the mountainside, like sonically speaking. So you get the plunk, and then just a little bit further down you start hearing the the tappings and the tom tap tom tap yeah and gimli's like that was the sound of a hammer or i have never heard one but it's described as they sounded disquietingly like signals of some sort yeah 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 like like a morse code but i think just the fact that the plunk started this morse code tapping yeah. which sounds like it's like oh that's 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 not just some random noise. That's like 
you, it sounds like there's agency yeah. behind it or there's like there's patterns behind it this is obviously done by like some like some kind of being that can use like, tools you know yeah which, a sentient yeah. being that's trying to signal other sentient beings yeah yeah and so. it, it always creeped me out and when it gr- starts to grow into the drums yeah yeah um then you know that it's like war drums are afoot but this it starts with the plunk and then it gets to the tap tom and then it yeah, turns yeah, into yeah. like war drums so but the very fact that and and earlier um you heard like uh boromir kind of mutter something right under right. his breath and it the the cavern kind of makes it echo and makes it audible to everyone around i i called it like a hot mic situation yeah 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 so there's something that moria does to sound it like amplifies sound and it it kind of well i mean it's, it almost like broad it almost like broadcasts sound like right right but i mean throughout moria yeah but there, it's like it's a cave it's reflective surfaces i mean it's right, like right it's like uh omnidirectional like uh ambience yeah. of of sound but you know though like like when like you see a resonator like the, when, when you see like the, the 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 depictions of moria it 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 feels like when I, when you're reading that they're in these little tunnels and hallways which they are but i mean really they're like these huge kind of cavernous kind of uh right, right. I mean, well, that's they're all what... connect- right. I mean, a lot of times they can't see what's surrounding them because it's so dark. Yeah, yeah. So they they don't know if it if the darkness runs into a wall like two feet away or twenty feet away. But every once yeah. in a while, they'll pass an arch or or a, or a column or yeah, some p- yeah. piece of architecture that gives them a sense that there's there's something kind of architecturally surrounding them. Well, the point is, like, like these don't feel like the, uh, the the Goblin Town. Goblin Town felt like very claustrophobic. Like it was like just mm. these these maggot holes, and then you get the one big, you know, one big room where the Great Goblin was. And then everything else is kind of like they just they you know maybe like these side rooms and stuff like that. This feels like 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 again like the the for lack of a better term the Underground Kingdom. You know, yeah. That's not. It's claustrophobic in the way that it's underground under the mountain, but it's yeah. not claustrophobic in the way that the, the the dwarves probably built this to kind of be like this grand, like this grand. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I always got the sense yeah. that it was, you know, it's built by dwarves, so it's going to be well built. Yeah, and it's not yeah. just going to be like maggot holes and rat runs. It's going to be like a real nice place if it yeah, yeah. had been kept up and maintained. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, but I mean, and, weren't and, the and, glittering caves of like Minigroth or whatever like? Hey, like Tolkien likes the idea that you can have a cave and if it's like air, aired out, if it's got ventilation and light coming through it, it can be quite a nice environment. Yeah, great place to be. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but again, like when I'm first reading this, when I was a kid, it, like it just felt like claustrophobic. And then again, when you see the depictions, like, Oh, this is way, way bigger than it is. It's like, like an abandoned city. It's kind of like, uh, like this, is like the post-apocalyptic, uh, part of, uh, of lord of the rings but my right. point is like the the sound is is so like a hot mic situation where every yeah. little noise gets kind of amplified and it gets echoed and this is where Gollum or where um frodo's starting to s- uh, hear Gollum. so even the slightest r- yeah. little subtle noise is like very um impactful or whatever so right right all this i'm building up this case for hey we should be quiet because obviously there's ears listening and if you think that these drums in the deep are kind of responding to the surface noise that they're getting then they should be quiet and try not to wake the the no you know try they should just right. be quiet keep a low profile so no boromir horns or whatever but so i always i i, I kind of noticed um this this time i never really noticed it before that um gimli kind of pulls a boromir yeah yeah because he just breaks into song <laughs> like, yeah when he's like it's like he rose and standing in the dark he began to chant in a deep voice while the echoes ran away into the roof right and right. it's like hey it, look at me i got this great song i wrote and it's <laughs> it's all about the durin and my ancestors and stuff and it's it's like the companions are probably like, Durin, could you just not, or uh, not Durin, Gimli, could Gimli. you just like not 
Like Ixnay on the OM pay. <laughs> <laughs> no hamming it up right now. We're trying to keep it quiet. And, and, and here's the thing. Did, like, what, did Gandalf say, Gimli, throw yourself in the well next time. <laughs> <laughs> throw yourself like, oh, in Gimli. next time. It's a great poem. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say anything about like, you know, sh- shutting the F up or. Uh, no. Well, it's like he goes on for quite long. some it's, while. It's like, I mean, like, it's like look, man, another you, you, stanza. You can, you can make, make an argument that like Pippin dropping the rock down there, like, like alerted something. Right. But it could also be like, Oh, those, uh, maybe a rat knocked a knock something off, you know, up there. Exactly. Like, like how many, can't... like in all of Moria, do you think a pebble doesn't fall down a yeah. hole every once in a while? Right. But how right. many times does a dwarf sing an epic saga? <laughs> and now it announces, uh, I'm there and I'm here to take, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So clearly, like, if there are any ears in all of Moria, they will be like, "Oh, right. a dwarf I'll singing! Like, How's oh. that dwarf singing in the in the grand chamber of Marzabul or whatever?" Yeah, but like, can you scroll through this real quick. Let me yeah. see. Uh, okay, I but like Sam's that. like I like that. Yeah, but it's like Gandalf. No, no, nothing from Gandalf. Yeah. You know, like shut the fuck up, uh, right? <laughs> no, like it's like, like shh, shh, shh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? exactly like, exactly yeah it's i'd a, like like no, no, sta- and not even no i'd be i'd be slow to to, to uh, sound your poem again uh uh gimli here we set out you know whatever right I like Gelleron told boromir like yeah oh. and like here they are having like this big animated conversation and like pippin's probably like what the hell guys i'm right here <laughs> <laughs> how come he gets to make noise i don't know i got He's double standard I got bro <laughs> Just a little pebble. I don't know. It's like, it's like, guys. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs>